gentlemen, here it is Christmas Eve, and like so many others throughout the country, Jack Benny is preparing a dinner party for his many friends. At the moment, he's setting the table in his living room. Rochester is helping him. There. <clears throat> Gee, the table sure looks nice, doesn't it, Rochester? Uh-huh. And I like the way the house is fixed up, too. Especially the tree. You know, Rochester, that's the biggest Christmas tree we've ever had. Yeah, it must have grown a foot since last year. <laughs> Oh, more than that. You sure, sure went through a lot of trouble decorating the house this year. Yes, but it's worth it, Rogers. Everything looks so, you know, so Christmassy. You know? Especially the service porch. You've got a wreath of holly in the window of each vendor. <laughs> I think it's nice. And during the holidays, the soap is on the house, you know? <laughs> Boss, you haven't missed a thing. You even got a little sprig of holly in Polly's cage. Uh-huh. Hello, Polly. Hello, hello. Come on, Polly. What did Daddy teach you to say tonight when the people come in? Mary, Mary. Come on, come on, the rest of it. Uh, Mary, Mary. Mary what? Mary Livingston. <laughs> No, no, no. Come on, try it again. Come on, Polly. Mary? Mary? Hmm. Been acting awfully independent since the price of eggs went up. <laughs> now, come on, Polly. You can say it. Mary? Mary? That settles it. Rochester, this year, Polly will get no eggnog during the party. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. She's included. <laughs> It works every time. You know, she's a sort of a feathered Phil Harris. Uh, by the way, boss, I wonder what's keeping Miss Livingston. Well, she said she'd come over and help us. She'll probably be here pretty soon. Uh, Pauline, please step away from the mirror so I can see how I look. Yes, ma'am. Now, let's see. Oh, Miss Livingston, you look simply beautiful in that evening gown. Oh, thank you, Pauline. But don't you think it may be a little daring for a Christmas Eve party? <laughs> well, all I can say is that if Santa Claus comes down the chimney, he'll hang around for a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is sort of low cut. Now, Pauline, when you put away my Christmas presents, I want you to be especially careful with that glass fruit ball my sister Babe sent me. Why? Is it very valuable? No, it's not expensive, but she blew it herself. <laughs> well, I better hurry over to Jack's house. He'll be expecting me. Say, do you think Phil Harris will be there tonight? <laughs> yes, Pauline, you've still got that crush on him, haven't you? Uh-huh. See, Miss Levinson, how I envy you, sitting at the same table that he'll be under. <laughs> If he looks up, I'll give him your regards. <laughs> well, I better leave now. Yes, ma'am. And uh, Miss Livingston, will you wear your mink, sable, or ermine coat? Uh, you can lower your voice, Pauline. The neighbors are out. <laughs> so uh, just give me my mackin on. I'll go. <laughs> Here you are, and enjoy yourself. The same to you, Pauline, and a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Now, Rochester, I think you can put all the place cards on the plate. Yes, sir, but I don't see how you're going to get all your cast and Mr. Harris' musicians around that table. Oh, the musicians aren't going to eat in here with us. They're going to, they're going to eat in the kitchen. Why in the kitchen? Because there are no rugs in there, and after they're through, you can hose it down. <laughs> and use, uh, use a little sweet air, too. Mr. Harris eat with his musicians? No, no, he'll eat in here. And I think we better have Remley in here, too. 
If I put him in the kitchen, it might hurt his feelings. You know, he's so sensitive, you know? Mr. Remley sensitive? Oh, he is, Rochester. Once during our program, I made a crack about him, and it got him so upset that he dealt the piano player six cards. <laughs> anyway, I hope they come early. I told Phil not to be late. Curly, take it easy. You're driving too fast. We got lots of time. No, we ain't. I promised Jackson none of us would be late. Well, what time does Benny want us to get over to his house, anyway? 6.30. 6.30? Ain't that kind of early for a party? Not if you want to see him. He goes to bed at 9. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't understand what... Hey, Curly. Curly, stop the car. Look at that cute little number standing on the corner. Look, Remley, we're late. I can't... Don't worry. Stop the car. Okay. Hey, honey, how would you like a lift and... Uh Uh-oh, drive on, Curly. What's the matter? Don't ask questions. Just drive on. Well, why? What's the matter? She's my aunt. Oh. (laughs) You know, Curly... I'm pretty tired out from all the Christmas shopping I've been doing. Yeah, me too, Frankie. Hey, look, uh, I've been meaning to ask you. What'd you get your father? Well, I thought that instead of getting him the usual type of gift, it might be better if I just called Dad up and talked to him. Wait a minute. You can't call him up. Yes, I can. He's a trustee now. Gee, you must be proud of him. (laughs) Yeah. Now, look, Remley, when we get to Jackson's house, I want you and the other guys to behave. Jackson's still mad because of the way you carried on to his party last New Year's Eve. Is he still upset just because we threw the trumpet player into his swimming pool? Yeah, and tonight, if we can find him, let's fish him out. (laughs) Now, look, Frankie, I'm going to hold you responsible for all the boys tonight, especially Sammy. Oh, Sammy won't be there. He had a tough day at the dentist today. He broke his two front teeth. Again? Remley, I've been telling you guys for years, get a bottle opener. Get a bottle opener. (laughs) One little bottle opener. Look, I think I'll turn here. This is a shortcut to Jackson's house. Everything is ready. I hope they get here soon. Say, boss, is it all right if I leave tonight as soon as I finish serving dinner? I've got a date. Oh, for heaven's sake, Rochester. Why'd you make it tonight? You knew I was having a party. I couldn't help it, boss. Well, couldn't you make it some other night? I can't take that chance. What do you mean, chance? Her boyfriend is a porter on the Super Chief, and I lost the schedule. <laughs> Only I thought you told me you were through with women since your last girl ran off and married another man. Well, she really loved me, but she married him on account of money. Oh, was he rich? No, but he had some. (laughs) Well, Rochester, I think that... I'll answer the door. I just see that there are plenty of ashtrays and luckies around the room. Jingle bells, jingle bells, how the snowflakes drift. I don't know who that is, but I hope they brought a gift. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. I hope I'm not late. No, come on in. Rochester and I were just... Say! Hey, that sure is a sensational dress you're wearing. Wow! I know, Jack. I really couldn't afford it, but it was so beautiful, I bought it on the installment plan. Really? How many more payments do you have to make before they give you the rest of it? (laughs) Oh, Jack. Come on, Mary. Let's go into the living room. Hold it, Mary. What's the matter? (laughs) I got you under the mistletoe. Fuck her up. Oh, okay, Jack. You deserve a kiss on Christmas Eve. (laughs) Wow. Hey, that was a good one. You know, I like those romantic kisses, you know. (laughs) I do. I I 
like those kisses when you take someone in your arm and bend them all the way back. Huh? Yeah, only next time you bend me. <laughs> I'll try, I'll try. So how do you like the way I got everything decorated? Oh, Jack, it looks wonderful and the table, place cards and everything. Yeah, look over at Don Wilson's plate. I'm trying to hint that he shouldn't eat so much. Do you think he'll get it? Well, that's obvious enough. Instead of a place card, you wrote his name on a piece of rye crisp. <laughs> now, let's see. Next to Don and his wife. And... Yeah. There, that does it, honey. What do you think? Oh, darling, you look so cute. <laughs> yeah. Oh, won't Jack be surprised when I come in dressed as Santa Claus? I really look the part, don't I? Yes, Don. Gosh, when I look at you, I feel sorry for all the girls married to skinny fellows. <laughs> ah, you really love me the way I am, don't you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll never forget our honeymoon in Hawaii. Oh, it was so divine, lying there on the beach at Waikiki, watching the moon come up over your stomach. <laughs> Must be the sportsman quartet. They're picking us up. I'll tell him we'll be right out. Merry Christmas, fellas. We'll be out in a minute. Merry Christmas to you both, and what a happy day. It makes us feel so very good that we just have to say, Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Mr. Benny's dinner parties are a thing to see. His table's fair, but you won't care. There's LSMFT. Be happy, go lucky. Be happy, go lucky. Strike, be happy, go lucky. Go lucky, strike today. Jack is such a perfect host, and he'll play love in bloom. And Phil will sing about that thing and drive us from the room. Be happy, go lucky. Be happy, go lucky. Strike, be happy, go lucky. Go lucky, strike today. You know, Jack, I've never seen you prepare for a party like you have for this one. Well, Mary, I feel if a thing's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Now, how do you like the way the table is set? Oh, it's beautiful, Jack. Simply beautiful. Only I hope that bottle of ketchup isn't in front of Dennis Day's place. Why, what's wrong with that? Remember last time he put the ketchup in front of him? He picked it up, poured it over his head, and yelled, Look at me, I'm Red Skelton. <laughs> oh, come on, Jack. Company. Well, all right. Come on, Mary. Follow me, Mary. Gee, it's dark in here. Watch your step, Mary. Don't trip down these stairs. Watch out. Don't tear your dress on the barbed wire. <laughs> I'll watch it. Careful crossing this bridge. <laughs> Don't fall in the moat. Careful. Jack! Jack, look at that crocodile! Yeah, I'm going to have to get a new one. This one's losing his teeth. <laughs> Down, Gummo. <laughs> Here we are. Oh, who goes there? 
Friend or foe? <laughs> Friend. What's the password? Poodle dee poop 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 dee poop. Oh, it's you, Mr. Benny. That's right. Come on, Mary. Mr. Benny. Mr. Benny, who's that with you? Oh, oh, this is Miss Livingston. Miss? Yes. Yeah, she's a girl. Girl? <laughs> yes, that's the the opposite sex. Sex? <laughs> I'll explain it to you some other time. Uh, how have you been, Ed? Fine, fine. But I haven't seen you for a long time. Oh, well, I've been busy. I've been traveling a lot, you know. Traveling? Yes. As a matter of fact, last month I went to Europe. Oh. Well, be careful that you don't travel too far, Mr. Benny. You're liable to fall off the edge. <laughs> no, no. No, Ed. They prove that it's round. <laughs> well, Ed, I, I came down here to give you this little present. Oh, is it my birthday? No, 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 Ed. It's Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas. Well, I'll open it and see what it is. Huh. Gee, just what I always want. A pair of sunglasses. <laughs> no, no, Ed. They're reading glasses. Thanks a lot. Well, goodbye, Ed. See you again soon. Bye, Mr. Benny. Now, come on, we better get upstairs before the guests arrive. Okay. By the way, who else is going to be at the party besides the cat? I invited the members of the Beverly Hills Beavers Club. Yeah, I bet those kids are plenty excited. We all here, fellas? Yep, all of us. Now, don't forget Mr. Benny's present, please. No more choice. Not after all the trouble I went to getting that violin record of Cora Staccato played by Yasha Heifetz. Why are we giving him a record by Heifetz? For sentimental reasons, Butch. After all, Mr. Benny was his teacher and taught him all he knows. <laughs> Mr. Benny taught Heifetz? <laughs> get some sleep. <laughs> what? You keep believing in that stuff and they'll put you back on Pablo. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did you guys ever hear Mr. Benny play the violin? Sure. I had him play old Promise Me at my uncle's wedding. He plays at a lot of weddings. Yeah. Mr. Benny and the minister have a package deal. <laughs> well, never mind, Jack. Now, Joy, you're going to give the record to Mr. Benny. I hope you remember the speech you wrote. Oh, sure, I know it by heart. Listen, to Jack Benny, do not open this till Christmas. It will keep you in suspense. If you haven't bought our gift yet, this one cost us 90 cents. <laughs> Why, Betty, don't take the hand. Okay, fellas, let's go. And I want to remind you of the special rules we passed to the party. There'll be a two-cent fine for anyone who asks for seconds at dinner. And a three-cent fine for anyone who blows on his suit. And a nickel fine for anyone who tells about the time Mr. Benny tried to show us how to do a cartwheel and his hair fell off. <laughs> right. Now, fellas, I think we all better wait outside, because Dennis Day is going to pick us up and take us to the party. <laughs> Dennis, you better hurry or you'll be late. Oh, I'll be ready soon, Mother. I'm shaving with that new electric razor you gave me for Christmas. What's taking you so long? The lather keeps clogging it up. <laughs> I'm almost done, though. Oh, for heaven's sake, Dennis. You're not supposed to lather up when you use an electric razor. I'm not? No. Now wash the soap off your face and put my brush away. <laughs> Yes, Mother. Now, son, I want to remind you of a few things to do at the park. Uh -huh. Remember, it will be Christmas Eve. Mr. Benny will be in a good mood. And maybe you can get him to drink a glass of wine and then ask him for a raise. Oh, no, Mother. Last Christmas I tried that, but he beat me to it. 
What do you mean? He made me drink the wine and I took a cut. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to keep away from him. I'm going to spend all my tri- time trying to get Mary Livingston under the mistletoe. Dennis, don't annoy Mary too much. Well, what do you mean, annoy? She's nuts about me. She is not. She is, too. Last month on my birthday, she kissed me. Did she kiss you on the forehead or on the lips? Both. I was on a pogo stick. <laughs> Dennis, son, uh, look at me. Yes, Mother? Dennis, sometimes you act a little silly, and I... I must confess it's probably my fault. Your fault? Yes, Dennis. Many years ago, when you were a little baby, I was bathing you, and I dropped you on your head. Well, that's nothing. Lots of mothers drop their babies on their heads. From the third floor? (laughs) Gee. I should have known there was something wrong when you bounced back up again. (laughs) Yeah. Well, Mother, I'm all dressed. I wish you'd change your mind and come to the party with me. Oh, I'd rather not, son. I I don't think it would be right. Mr. Benny isn't expecting me. Oh, yes, he is. I told him I was bringing you when I bought the tickets. Oh, well, in that case... (laughs) In that case, I'll go. Boss, shall I answer the door? No, I'll get it. Come on, Mary, that must be the gang. Well, it looks like everybody arrived at once. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Come on in, kids. Hey, Curly, get a load of the dress Mary's wearing. Yeah. Hi, Phil. Well, if it ain't radio's answer to Faye Emerson, you do. Hey, Phil, where are your musicians? Well, they'll be here in a few minutes. They got a present for you. A present for me? Yeah, the boys all chipped in and Bagby went to get it. He should be driving up any minute now. No kidding. A present for me? What is it? You'll find out. Hey, I'll give you a hint, Jackson. It's, uh, it's something you step down into. Phil, a new Hudson. No, a pair of shorts. <laughs> Well, they're nice, too. <laughs> now, come on, kids. Let's oh, get... Mr. Benny, I've got you under the mistletoe. Oh, Mrs. Day, now please stop pushing me. Now you have to kiss me. <laughs> now, please, Mrs. Day. He's been acting up and Mommy's getting away. <laughs> oh, go on, Jack. Kiss Mrs. Day. Mr. Benny. Oh, please, Mrs. Day. Please. Oh, look, his face is turning blue. <laughs> all right, Mrs. Day. All right, close your eyes. <laughs> There, how is that for a kiss? Kiss? I thought I tipped and fell on a wet mop. (laughs) Mm. All right, folks, here are your orders. Merry Christmas. Hey, look at me. I'm the mean wooded kid. Dennis, put down that (laughs) ketchup. Now behave yourself. Hey, hi, you Polly. Get out of here with that. <laughs> and don't come back no more. Isn't she cute? Now look, kids. Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry Christmas. What's the matter with Don? He's stuck in the chimney again. Oh. <laughs> well, we'll get him out later. Hey, Jack, how about serving the grub? Yeah, how about yeah. the food? Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. just, just a minute. Just wait a minute. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Just a minute. Now look, everybody, quiet. Quiet, please. I want to say something. Now, kids, this is Christmas Eve. Before we sit down to eat, I think we should all gather around the piano while Dennis sings a medley of Christmas songs. On behalf of my sponsor and my entire staff, I want to wish each and every one of you a very, very Merry Christmas. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.